Hello my friends, this is Noah and welcome back to the Learn Meta Analysis channel. Today I have something really cool for you. I know a while ago we were looking at how to connect our Zotero databases to our large language models and at the time we were using primarily large models for doing RAG. But I don't think you need a large model and I finally have proof that you don't actually need a large model to do RAG well. So I recently heard about this company called Liquid AI and they have what are called Liquid Nanos that they have put up on Hugging Face relatively recently and let me tell you, I'm impressed so far. So let's take a quick look at what we are looking at here. You can see they have a number of different models. Uh, I'm just gonna go right here to this 1.2 billion parameter RAG model, but instead we're going to go to the GGUF. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see, this is a teeny tiny model. Right, so we're talking about 1.2 billion parameters. So if you wanna run this at Q8, it's only 1.25 gigs. And I don't know about what GPU you're using, but I have a pretty cheap GPU. It has eight gigs of VRAM. So the ability to use a model at Q8, if it performs well, is awesome. So let's go ahead and check this out. Uh, I'm gonna jump over to Open Web UI, and I will just take one second here to show you what this model looks like. So let's first of all go ahead and get it loaded up. So I'm just gonna find my RAG model. I'm going to reference my database, which is just called test, and we will say, uh, what is social agency theory in the context of pedagogical agents? And so right now this model is not loaded into my VRAM. I'm gonna check it just to make sure. Yeah, nothing currently loaded in my VRAM at all for models. So let's go ahead and do this and you'll see how quick it is. So it's gotta load the whole model. Oh, it already did the query and bam, we're done. We're done. It was that fast. And if you read this result, it's actually pretty stinking good. So what, what's the takeaway here? The theory suggests learners interact with the agent. They interpret the interaction consistently with human-human communication, blah, blah, blah. That's accurate. And it gives us a reference and also tells us where it got that paper. And in typical uh, open web UI fashion, we have additional sources down here as well. So let's ask a new question here. We're going to reference that same set of studies. And what's another question we can ask about pedagogical agents? So how should I design a pedagogical agent to improve learning and let's see what it says based on those files. Okay, so incorporate individual differences into the design, ensure the agent communicates, accommodate students' cognitive styles, align the learning with the school's curriculum. These are kind of common sense, although I will say, um, you should ignore this learning styles thing as an education researcher. I feel I, I am obligated to say that when the word learning styles come up. Um, so let's do one more question here so you can get an idea of just how this thing functions. What's one more question that we can ask? I didn't mean to open a model there. There we go, new chat. Let's do one more in reference to this database. And actually, you know what? I bet some of you guys are wondering like, how does this perform on the same question compared to like, a brand new Mistral model. Okay, so we're gonna actually go with Mistral Medium. This is going to be run off of the API, so it'll be fast. I'm gonna ask both these models the same question. I'm gonna go back to that one we asked before. What is social agency theory in the context of pedagogical agents? In all openness, I have not directly compared the API based model from something like Mistral Medium, which is probably way bigger than this 1.2 billion parameter model. But let's see what it comes up with. I'm really curious about this. Oh man, okay. So on the left, social agency theory refers to the idea that learners interact with animated agents and interpret their interaction as consistent with human-human communication, uh, leads them to exert more effort to deep understanding, blah, blah, blah. That's all pretty solid explanation. Over on the right, in the context of agents, suggests that learners interpret their interactions consistent with human-human. This is almost word for word the same, guys, isn't it? This is this is almost word for word the same for that first that first sentence. Uh, the second piece theory suggests that when learners engage, they exert more effort. Okay, very very similar. It aligns with blah blah blah. Okay, great. And additionally, supported by findings, that learners who interact with agents tend to have higher motivation levels. Okay, so they're just grabbing an additional citation here. So okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. What do I have to say? This LFM2 model, 1.2 billion parameters for the specific for RAG one. I have, I honestly, I don't do RAG that much. So I was just experimenting for fun. It works really freaking good. 
Like, I, I'm mind blown how good it is. You can see how good the Mistral Medium was right here next to it. They came up with very, very similar answers. I would suggest giving it a try. If you do, remember that the RAG model, uh, they have suggested parameters on there, and I believe that temperature should be set at zero. Now, you're probably wondering what embeddings and things like that am I using. So let's take a quick adventure over into my RAG settings, and I can show you. I will say I haven't been doing RAG much, so I really don't have that much actually set up. What I do have is I'm using Mistral OCR uh, for my content extraction. I just have a thousand chunk size with a hundred overlap, that's default. The embedding model I'm using, I'm using this tiny little model, 300 million parameters, the granite embedding, and my rag template is exactly the default from OpenWebUI, and you can see my top K is 10. So with mostly, mostly default stuff here, I'm getting really, really good results. So what would I suggest? What I would suggest is if you like doing RAG, if you have a use case for RAG, if you want to keep the information private, then this tiny little model, LFM2 1.2 billion RAG, seems to work pretty stinking good and it runs lightning fast because it only takes up about 1.3 gigs worth of space. So my guess is you can run this on a ton of different hardware because the overhead is so low. So I just wanted to share this model with you guys. As I've said many, many times, I personally think that small specialized models are the future of private AI. This is just another example of how a very small model trained to do one specific thing can work really freaking well. So thank you guys. I know it's been a while since I uploaded a video, uh, but this video was kind of a long time coming. I've just been really busy and I learned about it. I wanted to share it with you guys, but I'm working on another project. I'm hoping the other project that uh, will have that video launched sometime this weekend. Really excited about it. I think it's gonna be a really fun opportunity and really fun watch for you guys. But in the meantime, this one's here. Check out this model if you like to do local RAG, uh, if, especially those of us with small GPUs on our computer. Maybe you don't even have a dedicated GPU. I think this model will probably still run pretty well. So that said, I'm going to jump off here. Have an absolutely wonderful afternoon, everybody, and I will see you in the next video.